Um, welcome everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Right, today... We are going to discuss... The present perfect simple and the present perfect simple versus the past simple. That's our topic for today. We already discussed the past simple. Now we're going to do the present perfect simple and contrast it to the past simple because the two are quite often confused, especially by speakers of Dutch. Okay. Um, before um, I start discussing this, I'd like you to uh, show a timeline in which you use the two, these two tenses especially. So um, this is a timeline of my life. And... Um, um, of your life. Yes. Um, I'll, I'll explain some of the things that's uh, on the timeline. And I'd like you to pay attention to the, um, the tenses I use. I, I'll use two different kinds of tenses. So this is 1989, that's where I was born. I was born in 1989. I was born in Gouda, and I still live in Gouda. So I have lived, I have lived in Gouda for uh, 28 years. Um, I started primary school in 1993. And then um, uh, I... Um, I went, I went to primary school for eight years. Then um, I took um, guitar lessons in 2003 when I was in secondary school. Um, but I only played the guitar for a few years. I haven't played the guitar for a long time. Um, then I left uh, secondary school in 2007 and went to the Hafe uh, Hochschule um, Amsterdam and I got my proper dose. So I, I went to the Hafe uh, for only one year. I went to the Hafe for one year. Then I went to the University of Leiden until uh, 2012. So I went to the University of Leiden. I, I, um, I studied in Leiden for four years. Um, I started playing the piano in 2004, and I still play the piano, so I have played the piano for how many years? I don't know. I've played the piano for quite some time. Um, let me see, what else uh, uh, can I say? I started teaching in 2012, and I was doing my master's at an MBO school, and um, I still teach English, so I have been te I have taught English for. Uh, I, I, actually, I started English when I was started teaching English when I was fourteen. So I have to, I've taught English for uh, um, fourteen years now. Um, and then I um, uh, became the chairman of the Tabernacle Society, which I'll uh, uh, which I won't explain here, but I can if you ask me. Um, in 2015, so I have been chairman for uh, three years, and I studied, um, and I started studying theology in 2017, and I've done that for, uh, I have studied theology for uh, three or four month, months now. So what, um, of course, if you haven't paid any attention to what I to uh, the tenses I'm using. <laughs> um, no. Which two, which two tense forms have you noticed? Does anyone know? Can anyone tell me? Sorry, can you say that? My voice is gone. Your voice is gone. I have played, yeah. And what are the tense? I have been playing. I have, yeah, I have been playing. Well, I said that, but I should have said I have played, yeah. yeah. What, are, what are the tense, yeah? Use past simple because she went to. Um, 
I went to Newcastle in two thousand. So half yeah, Papadopoulos. You only went there for one year. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, so I, I studied there for one year. Yeah. So that's past simple. So I used two tenses: one with have, and one without have. <coughs> right. Um, before I tell you what the difference is. Uh, by the way, this is a, a really good exercise to do with your students when you um, teach this topic at um, secondary school. You can ask them to make a timeline and then write sentences about things that are in the timeline. Before I tell you what the difference is, here are two sentences. One with has and one without has. One without have. Um, can you tell me, I'd like to think about this for uh, one minute, what's the difference between these two sentences? I'd like you to think about this for one minute. Right. Anyone, who can tell me what the difference is between these two sentences? Darcy. Okay, it's been so for quite a while. Do we agree? Anyone? Anything else? No. This means you need to pay attention today. Um, this first one means um, the first one's in the past simple. The second one is in the present perfect simple. The present perfect simple, as I'll explain to you in more detail later on, always has a link to the present. Um, when you say the babysitter has put the children to bed, the evidence is visible. You can actually see that this has happened. Either the, the, room is, uh, the, the living room is empty because the children are no more there, or they're in bed. So you can see them in bed. Just put them, put them to bed. In the first one, you don't necessarily mean that there is evidence. It could be a long time ago. It could be last week or last year. Yeah? So the first one is a single moment in the past with no link to the present. The second one, there is still evidence, visible. I'll explain this in more detail later on. So here is the difference. The top diagram, timeline, represents the past simple. This is just a single action, single uh, moment in the past. But had no has no link to the present. There's no, uh, you don't see any evidence. Um, this just happened, and it might be a long time ago. You don't want to imply that there is. This is still visible. The second one has a link to the present. Somehow links up to the present. It's also a past event, but um, has a link to the present. So here is one other example of how you use the present simple before uh, the present perfect simple. Before I tell you the rules, let me give you the rules in detail. First, here's another example of how you could use the present perfect. Have you ever had a dream that that you um you had you 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 could you do you you want 
you you can do so you you do you can you you want you want him to do you so much you could do anything. <laughs> so how did this kid use the uh, present perfect simple? Anyway. Did no one hear the present perfect simple? No. Have, yeah? He said, have you ever? Yeah, have you ever. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. Have you ever? <coughs> have you ever had a dream where? Um, this is uh, the present perfect simple in experiences, because an experience links up to the present, because you can still talk about it. Yeah? Okay, I'll explain to you what the rules are. First of all, there is one basic rule for the present perfect simple. By the way, the present perfect simple is also called the just the present perfect, without simple. But because we also have a present perfect continuous, we use the term, we prefer the term <coughs> present perfect simple, to distinguish it from the continuous. Um, this is always an action, a situation in the past, <coughs> even though it's called present perfect simple. An action, a situation in the past, that has a link to the present. Um, there's going to be five or six rules, but for each of these rules, you'll see how somehow they link to the present either because the evidence is still visible, or it's still uh, still continuing, or <coughs> it stopped just before um, uh, you speak, um, etc. So action, a situation in the past with a link to the present. That's the idea for the present perfect and simple. So again, here is the timeline. Yeah? So the circle indicates this links to the present. Okay, um, here are two sentences in the present perfect simple. I have tidied my room, and this is the first time I've driven a car. Um, I've tidied my room, this is the first time I've driven a car. I have tidied my room, this is the present perfect simple, and I have driven a car, this is the present perfect simple. This is called the present perfect simple because have, it always starts with the form of have, in the present, not had tidy, but have, <coughs> present, and then this is the perfect form, tidy, the, the, the past participle, and that's why it's called the present, perfect, and then simple because there's no info. Yeah? So this is how you um, explain the... Hello. Names of the tenses. Present because have is in the present. Perfect because tidy is the perfect form, the third column in the uh, irregular verbs diagram. And simple because there's no ing at the end of the verb. Okay, now why are these two sentences in the present perfect? I'd like you again to think about this for one minute. And you can discuss it together at the same time. Think about it for one minute. Could you repeat the perfect part? When you're explaining perfect. I did. It's the perfect, uh, it's a perfect form. Because it's past part of simple. That's what we call the perfect form. Yeah. They continue with having. Present perfect all kinds and form of and I'm in the present. I'm in the present. I'm in the I'm in the present. 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 I'm in the present.
Okay. Um, is there anyone who can explain why the present perfect simple is used for these two <laughs> sentences? Please. Yes, Tim. Uh, in the first example, he tidied his room in the past, but if you go to check, his room in the present is still clean. Very good. He tidied his room in the past, but if you go to check, it's still clean. The evidence is still visible. Yeah. And the other one? Um, the, third, the other one is because he is, you can actually see him driving the car. And uh, if he yes. weren't dr uh, yeah. driving at that moment, he would have said that this was the first time I drove a car. Yeah. Um, yes. Yeah. If, so if he looks back, this was the first time I drove my car. Yeah. Um, so the first one is what we call, and this is an official rule, uh, a past action with present results of recent events. Past action with present results, and then for recent events should actually be between brackets. Actually, be between brackets, um, because uh, this this usually then is recently. If the result is still visible, the evidence is visible. So an action in the past with evidence in the present or with present results. Then we use the present perfect. I have tidied my room. It's, you say the same thing for, um, I've broken my arm. I've broken my arm, which means it's in a sling. Or it's in a plaster cast. Um, because the evidence is visible, that's why you say, I've broken my arm. Whether, well, if you uh, broke your arm uh, last year, then you don't say, I've broken my arm last year. You say, I broke my arm last year. <laughs> Any questions? No questions? Second one. Um, this is actions <coughs> or experiences in our lives until now. For experiences, we use the present perfect. Um, this one, um, I realize now maybe I should have selected a different car too. This is an experience. This is the first time I've driven a car, but it's also driving now. But we also use this for um, things like, um, have you ever been to China? Have you ever been to China? <laughs> yeah. Actually, we had a Chinese Chinese guest, and she had never been. She, she said, "I have never been to Europe." And we uh, we live uh, we have a, a, a canal the, the back of our house. There were ducks swimming in the canal. She said, "Ah, oh, ducks! We've never seen ducks, you see." Because in China, they all live in the uh, apartment. She said, can we shoot them? Oh. She wanted to eat them. <laughs> um, so, I have, never, I have never been to China. That's an experience that you don't have, of course. Um, that's the present perfect. Um, I have read this book. I have already read this book. It's an experience. So then you use the present perfect. I have read this book. Yeah? Um, I've seen this movie before. I have seen this movie before. You don't say I saw this movie before. I have seen this movie before. Because you're talking about an experience that you can still talk about. So this has a link to the present. Yes? Often, um, guys, often, um, with this use of the present perfect, we use the words ever, never, before, or already. I have already seen this. 
Yeah? Any questions? So two rules where the present perfect clearly links to the <coughs> present because the first one is a result visible, your room is clean. The second one is an experience that you can still talk about in the present. <coughs> so again, there's a timeline. Yeah? So it links up to the present. Okay. Here are two sentences. My colleagues have gone to Paris and business. My colleagues have been to Paris and business. Gone and been. Um, both are in the present perfect. I'd like you to, to think about what's the difference between these two uh, sentences. What's the difference in meaning? What's the difference in meaning between these two sentences, which only have one word difference and are both in the present perfect? Um, I'll give you uh, 30 seconds to think about that. <coughs> have gone to Paris and went, and now they are still here. I have been to Paris and went, and went, and went, and went, and went, and went. You are great. Yeah. The books are fast. And the present is now perfect simple. And the Okay. I'll give you the answer. Um, same tense is used in both sentences. Both are present perfect, the meaning is different. Um, my colleagues have gone to Paris and business. Sorry about this. This is a new uh, microphone. That's <laughs> <laughs> um, when you say they have gone, the fact that they went there has a link to the present because um, they're there now. Yeah. They have gone to Paris, that's why they're not here. They are there now. The second one, my colleagues have been to Paris, is different of course. Because the being in Paris, not the going to Paris, but the being in Paris has a link to the present. What's the link then? Um, They've been there, and they've returned, and they can talk about it. Why are they all talking about Paris? Well, they've been to Paris. Yeah, so um, the first one, the going to Paris has a link to the present. That's why they're not here now. The second one, the being in Paris has a link to the present because they can still talk about it. They're back now, but they can still talk about it. Or, they all look so tired. That's why, why they're looking so tired, because they've been to Paris. Yeah? Any questions? No questions? Good to see you, Busa. <laughs> Somebody notices you're here. <laughs> Some key words for the present perfect. As I said, ever, never, and before. I have never been to, have you ever been to, and I haven't been to Paris before. These are key words for the present perfect. Just, the twin has just come in. Twin has just come in. Just. Um, just is something indicates that this is very recently. So with just, we quite often use the present perfect. Not always, but very often we use the present perfect because you indicate this was very recent and uh, the result is now visible. Have you already met my teddy? So already uh, indicates, uh, very often indicates an experience. <laughs> Jill has recently been ill. Recently, um, um, it's also a keyword for the present perfect, and again, this is recent. 
So there's a, uh, there might be a link to the present. That's why very often with recently we use the present perfect. Why are all the um, um, why are all the teachers so uh, uh, excited about France all of a sudden? Well, they've recently been to Paris. So recently is recent. So it's a not so long ago. So there's a link to the present because the evidence is still visible. You don't always use the present perfect with just already and recently, um, but quite often you do. The mouse has still left the house. Still, of course, um, links links it up to the present. Noch steeds. Yeah, it was so in the past. It's still so now. It's a link to the present. Brett hasn't finished yet. Yet also indicates the present perfect. Again, for these key words, you don't always use the present perfect, so don't think if I use a yet, I need to use the present perfect. But quite often you do. It's quite normal for these words to have a present perfect. Yeah? So, um, the tweet has just come in. Have you already met my Teddy? Jill has recently been ill. The mouse is still not left the house. The bread hasn't finished yet. It's a nice poem, isn't it? Um, any questions about this? No questions? Okay. Here are three more examples of the present perfect. Katie has watched Dracula 50 times. I have played Jet Set Radio Future today. I have been a teacher for three years. I'm still a teacher, but judging from the her look, I think she might, she might have to stop. Yeah. <laughs> um, here are three examples of the present perfect. Can you figure out why the present perfect is used in these three cases? So these are three additional rules. Again, think about the link to the present. What's the link to the present here? Why would the present perfect be used? I'll give you um, two minutes to figure this out. I'll give you the rules. <laughs> All three. The first one. Um, this is a, an action that was repeated in the past, but may be repeated in the future. In other words, she watches this regularly, so she's, still, she's probably going to do it again. So this, is, um, uh, this habit is still not finished. So she has watched Dracula 50 times. When you say that, you imply she's going to do it another time. Yeah? Or you could say this is an experience as well. She's not so, uh, she's not so interested because she, uh, she has watched it 50 times already. Yeah? So that's an additional, that's a, 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 a additional option. Um, when you say she watched Dracula 50 times, then you mean she's not going to watch again. When you say she has watched 50 times, you imply she might actually watch again. So repeated actions in the past, which may be repeated in the future. So again, there's a link to the present, because not only does she have the experience, but also um, she might watch again. So this is continuing. The second one is an action in the time period that is still continuing. This sounds difficult. Um, this boy saying, I play Jet Set Radio Future today. Um, today is not finished yet. So, um, he might do it again. Also, it's a very recent experience. But when the time period to which you're referring is not finished yet, you use the present perfect. Another example, um, um, I've been to uh, 
I've been to America. I've been to America three times in my life. Your life is not over yet. That's, that's the time period that's still continuing. Whereas when someone's not alive anymore, you say, he went to America three times. Because he's not going to go again. Yeah? Or, um, if someone's not going to go again, because they're too, uh, I don't know, they're too poor or too uh, ill or whatever, then you say, he went to, th to America three times. Yeah? So the time period is still continuing. Like, today is not over yet, not finished yet. I still don't understand the second one. Okay. Um, you can say, she called me 50 times yesterday. Then you use the past simple, right? She called me 50 times yesterday. Hold on, just a second. Um, that's the past simple, because yesterday is finished. Yeah? You don't say, she has called me 50 times yesterday. You don't say that. You can say, she has called me 50 times today, because today is not over yet, and she might call again. Um, I realize there's a, a, an overlap between these two, and also between experience. But that's so with every tense. With every rule for every tense, there's always some sort of overlap. If that's the case in the test, don't worry. Uh, we'll, ask, we'll mark both options correct. You can, never, you can never guarantee that a sentence has only one rule. Um, there might be two or three rules that apply. But just bear in mind the basic rule, this is a past action with a link to the present. That always helps. Does that explain it to you? If you say this was yesterday, so I played Jet Set Radio Future yesterday, and that's over. Today is still going on. That's why I said I have played Jet Set Radio Future today. Yeah? And then this is very recent, so so uh, the result is visible because his eyes are really big because he's been playing all the time. I don't know. Um, or um, he might actually play again. Yeah? And that then it links up to this one. So don't worry if you think, hmm, isn't this uh, more or less the same? Yes, sometimes it is. Sometimes you can use two or three rules at the same time for one tense. That goes for every tense. Um, then the last one, and this is, I think this is the most well-known use of the present perfect. Situations that started in the past and continue now, till now, with four or since. So something that started in the present and continues till now. This should actually be continue to now, continue till now. Um, this one is where Dutch people often go wrong. Um, because if you say, um, Ik ben drie jaar docent geweest, I have been a teacher for three years. In Dutch, this means this is over. This was in the past. In English, it means it's still going on. I'm still a teacher. Yeah? So in Dutch, we don't say, um, um, we zijn al vijf jaar samen. Uh, sorry, we don't say we zijn, ze zijn vijf jaar samen geweest. We say ze zijn vijf jaar samen. In English we say they have been together for five years. We don't say they are together for five years. Yeah. They have been together for five years means and they're still together. Yeah. Any questions? Yes, yeah, so there are five rules which I want you to remember, and I'll, I'll, I'll list them all together again. I have a question about um, writing numbers. When you write the number fully, or you just write the number only, like in this sentence? Oh, the, the, it differs. It differs per situation and it differs per person. Um, many people say that when it's more than 20, then you, um, like then you, you don't use a number anymore, you write it. You can, then you, you use a number instead of the letters. That, that's in Dutch. Is that also in English? That's what people, yeah, it differs. Um, there's not an official rule for it. Yeah. I think there is. You think there is? Yes. I don't think so. Can lie to us. It depends, it depends per grammar book and per style. So there's different grammar styles, the different styles that people use. Um, 
usually they usually came from newspapers, like the Guardian uses a different style than the, the uh, Daily Telegraph. I remember saying that there is. Well, it depends on, on the style that you use. But there's no set sort of uh, rule. Okay. But usually, um, when it's more than 20, it's okay to use a numbers rather than letters. So, in this situation, you should have used three. But this is not formal, right? Yeah. This is a cartoon, so this is yeah, not a formal know, situation. Like, yeah, yeah. Formal, yeah. Okay. So, five rules. Um, I'll list them together later on. So, again, here the timeline. There's a link to the present. Just bear that in mind. For the present perfect. The present perfect has or always it, always a link to the present. Yeah. Or it may have a link to the present. There's always some sort of link to the present. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, there are four sentences. I'd like you to um, uh, think about the question whether these are used correctly, uh, whether the words that are underlined are used correctly in these sentences. So since, for, so far, and how long? Are they used <coughs> correctly in these sentences? Um, two minutes. Um, here's the key. The first two are incorrect, and the second two are, the last two are correct. People who say, for many years, and since December two, 2007. Um, these are key words for these uses of the present perfect, the last three uses. For and since, so far and how long. Um, the third sentence, sorry, the first sentence, Susan has lived in Australia since many years. No, for many years. For many years. And she still lives there. That's what you imply. That's what you say. You say she has lived in Australia. In Dutch, you could you would say she won't all. He'll last in Australia. But you, you can't say she lives many years in Australia. Don't say that. Yeah. Uh, but you can say since two years. No, uh, that's wrong. Since Four two years. years. Four two years. Yeah. Since uh, you could say since two years ago. That sounds a bit awkward. So since uh, since 2016. Yeah. Pitches work at Starbucks since December. Yeah. So not for December, but since December. Um, again, this is an action that started in the past and still continues. So since is only for one time, one, one particular time, day or date. Yeah, so a past simple event in the past, Yeah. December 27, and then since that. I'm living there since 2010. I have, I have lived been. there since 2010. Yeah. Yeah. That's a Dutch mistake. I'm living there since. Yeah. That's what Dutch people say. Sorry about this. The computers have crashed three times so far this week. This is correct. Again, this is an example of the sentence where the time period is still unfinished. The time period is still continuing. This week is still ongoing in this sentence. If you say the computers have crashed three times so far this week, the week's not over yet. Sorry? How long have you believed in emergency exits? You started believing in them at some point, and you're still believing in them. Yeah? for how long? How long have you believed? Well, how, both are correct. Yeah. For how long? How long have you? Yeah. 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 You can say how long have you believed? Yeah. Any other questions? Let me see how much more we've got to uh, cover. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'll finish this, and then we're done slightly early. Um, so I could do a break now, but then um, we're almost done. Yeah. Okay. I can have your attention again. Just relax.
Yeah. How long have you been believing? Can you say that? No, because believe is a, a state verb, so you can't use it in Yeah, have you believed? Yeah. What is the state verb? Yeah, to agree is a state verb. Okay. Here's another exercise for you. 30 seconds. Fill in the right form of the verb. One's present perfect, the other one's past simple. The police arrested two criminals apparently they had been caught in the They the police arrested the soft bites who hurt. Okay. Um, what's the correct answer? Can anyone tell me? Yeah. The police have arrested the two criminals. Apparently, they caught them last night. Okay. You say the police have arrested the two criminals. Criminals or criminals? <laughs> criminals. Apparently they they caught them last night. I do that all the time, switching around, switching around uh, letters. So criminals instead of criminals. I, I used to work in a, in a green grocers, and we'd, uh, I'd say things like "groepschoente" uh, um, instead of "soepschoente." And then, and then, uh, uh, some time ago, my, my sister-in-law, she was uh, cooking in our kitchen. I said, "Can you help me?" I said, "I'm not. I'm not so good in." I said. I am not so good in boken and kakken. Instead of cooking. Okay, anyway, the police has arrested the two criminals. Criminals. <laughs> Apparently they caught them last night. Can you explain? Can you explain why you did that? No, I cannot. Ah, but that's the that's the thing for the test, so you'll explain it. Okay. I'll help you. Um, one action. Um, one action um, is has a clear link to the present, and the other one um, happened before that. Um, the fact that the criminal is in, is in prison is evidence of the fact that they were arrested. Um, so the police has arrested the two criminals. Still have. Is it has arrested? Sorry, the police have, yeah. The police have arrested the two criminals. Apparently. Can we, um, can we keep it quiet, please? The police have arrested the two criminals. Apparently, they caught them last night. Last night is an indication of time in the past. So this is an action that was over. When you use indication of time in the past, like last night, or yesterday, or last week, or two hours ago, then you can't use the present perfect. You always have to use the past simple with an indication of time in the past, yesterday, or last week. So you can't say, I have been, uh, I have been on holiday last week. No, I went on holiday last week. Even though you still feel quite relaxed because you went on holiday, because you say last week, you can't say I have been. You have a question? Yes, uh, why can't you uh, say the police arrested? Because there's evidence. There's evidence that they, um, um, uh, that they, uh, it, this happened recently, and the fact you say that is um, there's evidence that they're now, they're now in prison. Yeah, or in the police office. So they, um, uh, that's why you have to say they have arrested. Yeah, the result is visible. 
The police arrested the two criminals, um, then it's longer ago. And then there's no longer, there's not necessarily any evidence. Yeah, so this, this is very recently because it was last night. Yeah, and that's why you'd use the present perfect. Um, this example shows that we often use the present perfect, and that's the last rule. to introduce new information, so giving news. That's why if you read a newspaper, if you read a newspaper, the present perfect is used very often. Because we use the present perfect to give news. I bought a new phone. This is news, this is new information. And you can actually show it. Yep. So when we give news, the latest news, then we use the present perfect. So this could be a, a sentence from a, a local newspaper. The police have arrested the two criminals. Uh, so this is news, and that's why we prefer the present perfect. Also, because there's actually evidence of this. So, when we want to introduce something which is news, which is new information, which recently happened as news, then we use the present perfect. The things that we say after that, the details, are then in the past simple, like here. The police have arrested the two criminals, apparently they caught them <laughs> last night. That's in the past simple. Also, because we use last night, we have to use the past simple. Tip. Could you give an example of the present perfect continuous? I can. But I, 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 I'm not going to go. So I'm not going to explain it because otherwise I'm confused. That's fine. But I, um, but, um, I have been living here. Ah, okay. Two years. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Here are six rules. Yeah. Here are six rules. A past action with present results for recent events. I have tidied my room. My room is tidy now. You can actually see the result. Um, experiences. Uh, then we use the present perfect, things that you can talk about because you've experienced them. Third one, giving news. The police have arrested, arrested the criminal. The Queen has arrived, has arrived in uh, uh, wherever. Katie has watched Dracula 50 times. This is a repeated actions in the past that may be repeated again. The one that the sentence which I didn't show earlier was a chap has never seen it. Again, this is an experience. <coughs> uh, I play Jits at Radio Future today. This is the actions in a time period that still continue. It's today. Today is not finished yet, so I might watch it again. Um, and situations that started in the past and continue till now, with four or since. So these six rules need to be remembered, but at the back of that, remember, this is a past action with a link to the present. On the test, I'd like you to mention one of these. Um, but remember, as a general rule, so don't write that general rule in the test, um, because it's too general, but as a general rule, we say this is a past action with a link to the present. Yeah? That might help you to remember all these six. Any questions? No more questions. Then, uh, oops. Here's a review exercise. I'll give you uh, six questions. Uh, three minutes to do this exercise, and then we'll be done. Um, so let's look at the answers.
Did he buy or has he bought a car from the supermarket before? It's has he bought. Um, this is an action or an experience in our life until now. This is an experience. Has he bought, has, has he done this before? Um, does he have his experience? So that's why we say, has he bought a car before? I've been to the theatre yesterday, or I went to the theatre yesterday. Went, because yesterday indicates finished time. Yeah? So with yesterday, last week, last year, etc., anything in the past, we can't use a present perfect. She has called, but she called me 50 times a day. I gave you this example earlier today. She has called because... Um, it's uh, likely she may call again or not. But then I realized when I wrote this down, it might actually also be called because today might be almost finished and she's not going to call again. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So she's called me 50. Yeah. So it's quite likely to call to happen again unless. Um, Unless you uh, uh, did something to uh, to her or to her phone or something. Yeah? So this is the best car I own, or this is the best car I, I've ever owned. I've ever owned, this is an experience um, in our life. In our life. Experiences in our lives until now, with ever. Ever, we mostly use <laughs> present perfect. Um, this one is, of course, since 2003, because we can't say since eight years. We use since with a particular time, day, or date, or with past events. Um, I've got, or I went to look at some used car two weeks ago. Again, this is wet, because it's two weeks ago, finished action in the past. So two weeks ago indicates finished time. Any questions? Yes. The first sentence is both has... Has both. Has both. Um, I'll show you the homework and go back to this slide later on when you still need to copy things. Here's the homework. Um, thanks for your attention and I'll see you next week.